In the previous slide, we discussed about Kosovo ARM framework and we talk about what are the key components and the principles and we talk about what are the key limitations. Here in this slide, we will be discussing about the risk management framework, another risk management framework, which is known as ISO 31000. ISO 31000 is basically um, a guideline um, uh, which give you um, a structural approach how to carry out the risk activities basically um, the whole uh, framework is basically uh, depicted in this one picture it talks about that we whenever we are doing it in risk uh, risk management activity we have to ensure that the scope context and criteria needs to be taken into account scope that uh, what is the engagement scope for which you are doing a risk assessment uh, maybe it, it could be at the engagement level or be, it, it could be at this the scope could be at the company's entity level context is that your your organization is in which sector uh, what are the laws and regulation that is affecting what are the customer base what are the competitors um, so these uh, regulatory framework in which you have to work taxation laws environmental factors so these are the contexts uh, which you have to take into account criteria is you are whenever you are doing a risk assessment against what you you want to measure against uh, for example <clears throat> if you say a <clears throat> the <clears throat> the manager has um, has not taken a or the manager has uh, already exposed the company in one contract. So what is the criteria? The criteria will be delegation of authority. So in delegation of authority, the, the, the authority level and to what extent he can take a decision uh, on behalf of the company that will be defined. So this is a criteria. Another way of criteria would be uh, if you say someone, the company might be exposed to a fine this is the risk, right? But what is the criteria? What are the parameters by the law? What are the parameters by the uh, by the regulator that they have put forward in order to comply with? And beyond that, which might expose to the fine. So, you, whatever you, whatever the event you are uh, assessing against the criteria uh, or against the standard, that is basically our criteria. So that you have to take into account then risk assessment again is the same process where you assess the risk after identifying first you identify the risk then you assess the risk um, Okay, risk assessment, they, they have broken down into risk identification, risk analysis, and risk evaluation. So risk identification is the first step. Then risk analysis is um, uh, when you see what is the likelihood and impact of the risk. And risk evaluation, when you try to prioritize those risks, whether it's a high risk, medium risk, or low risk. Um, then the risk treatment. The risk uh, treatment is basically whether you want to accept the risk, whether you want to avoid the risk, you want to place the controls. So how you are managing those risks, so that is also needs to be taken into account. Um, then there are three things which we have to ensure that recording and reporting should happen. Um, uh, top down and bottom up communication and uh, consultation should be part of embedded part of the risk management process monitoring and review should also be embedded part of the risk management and this is the whole process which is being um, given uh, as, as a guideline by the ERM risk management framework ISO 31000 Let's go quickly um, to the yeah, ISO uh, 31000 uh, framework. So it basically uh, has three components, principles, framework, and processes. The principle talks about that the entire risk management activity needs to be integrated within the organization. It cannot work in isolation where only the risk management department, you presume that they are only responsible for the risk management however they are the facilitator of each and every individual within the company from the very top to the very bottom everyone is responsible for risk management so that integration we needs to have and also the integration from uh, that the risk management should be taken into account at the strategy level at the objective level at the departmental objective level so throughout within the organization um, it 
the risk management in itself needs to be very structured, uh, systematic and organized and comprehensive enough for everyone to understand. Every organization is unique in itself. So the risk management activities needs to be customized and tailored bespoke to the nature of that company uh, without compromising on the key fundamental elements of the risk management. <clears throat> Inclusiveness, obviously, where um, we have to take into account that it, it belongs to the company, dynamic change with the organizational change, Best, based on the best available information, um, that all the information that flow within the organization like a blood should be best available information. Human and cultural factors need to be taken account. And lastly, there should be a continuous improvement. So these are the key principles of a good risk management uh, activity. Framework components are that leadership and commitment on at the top is very much in, important. The integration between uh, and 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 everyone should feel responsible for. That is very much important. The design and implementation, evaluation and improvement of the entire risk management uh, system is also part of the key core component of the in this framework. And when, when we talk about the process, the process remains the same. Communication, consultation, scope, context, criteria, risk assessment, risk treatment, monitoring and review and recording and reporting, this all needs to be um, part of a uh, part of your risk management activities within the organization. Whenever we talk about uh, auditing a risk management activity within the organization, we can take these principles and see whether the, these principles are being uh, are being followed by the risk management uh, activities or risk practitioner within the organization or not. There could be another approach by which we take our audit um, activity by ensuring that the process of risk management is being followed or not. And the third way of doing an audit of risk management is by maturity model. So capability maturity model is a five-step model. And there is a new version of the same model which has zero in the start. So from zero to five or one to five, you gauge the risk activity based on its maturity that to what level the organization risk activities are. And the way is <clears throat> you you keep these frameworks in front of you and see that how many activities of these frameworks are being followed and uh, managed and repeatedly being, being followed by the organization and if there is a continuous improvement that is being followed or not. So there these are the three main different way of auditing the risk management activity. <clears throat> One thing to keep in mind, if uh, someone asks you that what is the best risk management framework that should be used. There is no best or worse. It depends on the organization. It depends on you. So all the frameworks are good. Some people use ISO 31000. Some people use COSO ERM. And some, uh, some combine these two. And some has some use even there are Turnbull and some other framework, risk management framework that is being used by different people. So there is no best thing as we have uh, discussed that it, it whatever best suits to you and your organization and the culture that you can adopt in terms of risk management framework.